Hi, this is Patricia Stewart. Welcome back. Today um, I have some accordion books. I was playing around with these and enjoying all of the process of making them. Let's see if I can get this. And here's one that I did. As you can see, the different pages, as well as the other side. And I stuck with one particular sten um, stencil for each side and I just kept uh, using different colors and developing it. And then I made these covers and I used, let's see. I used um, this heavy duty uh, sheet, card sheet that I got a long time ago. And this is um, Tim Holtz's watercolor card stock. You get 10 sheets in a pack, eight and a half by 11. And I had them for a very long time and happened to stumble on them. And so it's a sturdy, um, watercolor sheet. It's pretty stuff and heavy, tough, heavy than um, regular cardstock paper. And so I use this to make the covers. I just measured the covers out. And then I covered them with some existing gel prints. And attach them one side of the accordion book to each end for the cover. And then I had some elastic laying around from making masks during COVID and decided to uh, use those. And here was another one, a different size. And my measurements aren't perfect. Um, I had some scraps of um, mixed media paper lying around. And I really wanted to use up some of those uh, sheets that I had. And so this was a good idea to do so. Again, this was um, some gel prints that I had. And so this one might be sticking a little bit. I use one stencil and just did several different prints, repositioning the, stem the stencil at the same time. Some of these are sticking together. And um, I think one of them I started some mark making. That's what I like about these is you can, after you pulled your prints onto them, you can then do some mark making using markers or um, Posca pens, Sharpie pens. Okay. And so here is the other side. And you see I've done some mark making with the Posca pens and my Sharpie. And these are fun to do. And they're like mini paintings, mini abstract paintings. And so I will take you through the steps that I did to make 
um, these neat little accordion books. So I will be working with the 3x5 gel plate. And um, what I did, I already pre-cut out um, the paper. And so let me show you So this is mixed media paper and I buy them on huge sheets, as used sheets, and then I cut them down for uh, whatever I am going to use them for. And so this was a piece that I may have had left over. This measures six. by three and a half. And so what I did was I took the six by three and a half, right? I have this piece just like this. And first I fold it in half evenly, corner to corner, as evenly as possible, corner to corner. Then I take one side and fold it back to the fold, turn it over, take the other side, fold it back to the fold. And this is what I got. Then I had another short piece. I did the same exact thing, but now I want to attach it. Um, sometimes you can get the paper that you want to use um, on a sturdy, you know, paper on a, a long lengthwise paper, and then you can just cut it to the length that you want. But I didn't have that, so I had to then um, use some pieces. And you want it facing you where it looks like an M, right? Like that, as you're going to attach these two pieces. And so I use some masking tape, right? I didn't have any white masking tape. The other idea is to cut a piece of computer paper, say about, say about an inch and a half. Cut a piece of computer paper and put double-sided tape. You tape it to one part of the end, and then the other end uh, with a double-sided tape attached to the computer paper, you want to put these ends together as best as you can. Now, my ends are not perfectly even, but this is so that now it will fold. Okay. When you begin to make your prints and pull your prints, you will be working over this. And this uh, really won't be seen because it will be covered. Okay? And so that's an easy accordion. If I wanted to add more, I'd cut another, uh, you know, sheet the same size measurement and I would keep adding and adding and adding. Okay, so this is how we get what we have. Okay, so I'm going to pull some prints today uh, with this. 
and keeping in mind that the accordion book can be any size that you want it. Um, I have some bigger ones here uh, that I have not worked on yet, but you see how large these sheets are. And it can be any size. Here are some scraps left over when I have gotten through cutting and I didn't want to waste any paper. So I also folded these and here's another one. Now you can use, um, with the larger ones I used mixed media paper which is kind of weighty but easy to, you know, to fold and I used a bone folder to fold it down. And with this one, this was um, the Paycon Artist First print paper. And this was pretty sturdy as well. Okay, so you can use art paper, or you can use mixed media paper um, to do it as well. And so I want to pull some prints and hopefully I can uh, get this where, okay, it's close enough. And um, I'm just going to pull random prints. I'm not going to um, have any particular one in mind, just some random prints. And here's a three by five gel plate. Let's see. Generally, you can you may have an idea as to what designs you want to put, and I'm just going to do random pulls. So I'm going to start with some cadmium yellow, pyrrole orange. She's a golden fluid acrylics. And I just want to add color. I really need my smaller brayer. And so I'm just going to pick this up and I'm going to lay it. Oh boy, it fell off my mount, but not a problem. Okay, I did have it mounted, but all right. So here is one color that came out. It's better if I deal with my smaller brayer. Okay, now I'm going to take another pull using some teal a little teal and a little Titan green I'm just pulling col colors off the top of my head I'm not really thinking about whether it goes together or it doesn't. Okay, and I want to 
Well, I'll put this down first. And I want to create some type of design here where I have that. And I have that at the other end. And I'm going to keep moving and I'm going to add, let's see, a little Titan buff. And let's go with a little green gold. Okay. I want to add maybe a little bit of this to one end. Mind you, we are making Sort of like small mini abstract paintings. Okay, I want to add a little bit to the top here. A little bit more here. Okay, and that's one. I like the texture that we get here. So that's one panel. And now we go on to the second. And I'm going to pick up whatever's left on the plate. Now I'm going to go in with some manganese blue. And let's see. Now we don't, I don't want too many off-centered colors. Uh, you can keep your colors in the same family. Um, but I'd like for each panel to lead into the next, into the next. Okay, and so that was um, ultramarine blue that I put in. Okay, so for the second panel, I will go in, take the whole pull of what's on the plate. And we have that. And I will go in with, let's see, a little Titan Green Pale. A little phthalo blue, which is a darker blue. And some Naples yellow. It's a very soft yellow. Sometimes it's good to add a little texture. So I'm going to go back and do some on the side, pull that print.
didn't really stand out as much as I thought that it would. other side. Let me get a little of that. And the thing is to be careful that, you know, with each panel section um, that you do, that you don't get paint like on this back side here. If you're using a stencil as you do it, that's fine. But you just want to be careful that you're not getting um, a lot of paint onto other areas that you've already sort of pulled. Okay, and so that's what that looks like. I may have to pick this up and try to get these corners here at the fold. Okay, and so that's one section. Now we move on to the next section. Now I may put some solid prints in between here. Um, let's see, some green gold. Well, now I have enough green going on. I may want to use, hmm, I think I will go in with pyro orange. I want to stay within certain colors for this one side. So here's the pyro orange. I mean, you can do whatever you want to do, however you want to lay your colors, or how you want to arrange them. Now uh, that's pretty nice. Um, it picked up what was left on the plate. Okay. I will go in now with a darker color, use some turquoise, I'll use half the plate for this because I only want to do like an edge. I'll go back into the orange, just the top part. While you're working, it's not a problem to get paint on the back because you're going to come over that with more paint. You just don't want to keep getting paint on the ones that you've already printed. Okay. So here I have that at the top and on the bottom. And let's 
see if I can get this line of paint in the center. And I have that in the center. I don't much worry about the sides. Um, if I plan on embellishing with a Posca pen, uh, I can do some designs on some of the uh, cards. Okay, so we move on to the next panel. I'm going to come in with Naples Yellow. picking up the excess paint and whatever that color is, it uh, works well. I could come on top of each of these with a stencil with a different color on top to really uh, bring out my design. Okay, I'm going to go in with some teal. I'm kind of using some of the same colors, but in a different way. And a uh, Titan buff. I'm just kind of mixing them differently. going to go into the next square, next section with that color. And right now these colors, and that's a nice one, these colors don't look like anything in particular but I probably will go over them uh, with a stencil. So let's keep moving. Um, let's see. I'll use some Titan Green Pale. And mix that with a phthalo blue. And it's kind of staying with blues and greens and orange pretty much. Let's go into the next section here. to bring back a little orange, pyrrole orange. as well off the plate. 
And now my last panel on this side, I will go in with, again, Naples Yellow. And a little green gold. So with all these colors mixed in, that don't really look like much. But the developing begins now with adding some type of mark making or stencil. I like that pull. So here we have all of the panels pretty much. Okay. And so when you stand it up, uh, you are looking at that. A bunch of mini art papers. Now I'm going to get a stencil and for all of these colors now to come out using a stencil I will have to go in with lighter and uh, some darker. Maybe some Payne's Gray um, a little white, titanium white, and I'm trying to avoid red, although my eyes keep carrying me to the red. Maybe a little ultramarine violet. And so I will select a couple of stencils from my batch. And I have a wall full of different stencils and I'm just going to use pretty much the same ones just repositioning them okay so I will go in with some titanium white clean off the sprayer a little bit I'm using a little bit more paint than normal simply because I have to pull through the stencil this design on top with the white. What I will do is try to get the ghost print on the opposite end to come on that section. There's a nice one. Okay, I want to go back in again using the same stencil, but I'm going to use some ultramarine violet. And this 
ultramarine violet is pretty um, translucent. I'm going to reposition it differently. I'm going to go into this one that we did. Let me get it positioned just right. And this is just developing these mini paintings. This way you can see all of the colors that we used on this first one. And I'm going to go back to this one and see if I can pull up a little bit of this ultramarine violet. And because I'm working with a small plate, or even if it was a larger plate, I would still have to be a little careful. And so here are the two with the stencil. Now I want to move on to the next square, which will be this one here. Dab a little, take some of the wetness off. And so I'm going to go in with, let's see, I think I will go in with the turquoise. here and that is a nice pull and I don't think that I will do anything else pretty much to that one. And then the ghost print. Let's see. I'm thinking of trying to pull that. Well, let's see. better or worse. It's a nice mixture of colors and I still can go over this with a lighter color if I want to. Okay, I'm going to take a pull on top of this with a stencil. already dark colors in there. Um, I will use some Naples yellow.
go in with another stencil here. Sort of a different design. turned out to be a nice, a nice print, nice unexpected. Sometimes you don't really know how the print will come out. I'm not sure about this. So what I'll do, since I already have that color here, I will just add a little bit more paint to whatever I have here. It's the same colors. It adds a nice little design at the bottom. Is nice. See if I can get a little on the sides. Okay. So now I will go in using. Hmm. It's a little tricky as you go on with the choice of colors. I think I'll go in with some ultramarine blue. I try not to think much about it. Just go with it. So I'm going to go back to this stencil here. Go in with this one here. Okay, that's pretty good. I think I'm going to use this last one to pull the ghost prints until that gets to be whatever and then go over it with a stencil. Okay. Um, And now we'll go in with a little Titan Green Pale. That stencil. didn't really do much so I will go in again with the same stencil now with a little titanium white so maybe it'll stand out a little and using the same stencil 
sideways. And so we see the white. Still not standing out the way I'd like it to. So I will clean off this plate at this point. a little wow trying to remain within those colors so I will use a little um, ultramarine violet okay we're back and um, I pretty much finish that side that I started with. I embellished with my Posca pens. Now I'm going to lose this one and this one when I put the cover on. But here are, here is the finish. Of that side and then I continued on to the other side using one stencil but repositioning it different colors just getting a mixture of prints and with my Posca pen I just made one made it look like one continuous piece of art there's so many different options. I can continue to embellish upon it if I want to. So now I need to make the cover. I finished one earlier. Um, and so how I did the cover was I cut uh, this um, watercolor paper to the size of the book, but I cut it a smidgen bigger all around, just a little bit. And I also cut a paper a little larger than this so that it can now fold over. So the first thing I'm going to do is cut these edges off. Because after you fold it, I should have said that first. You get your paper, you fold all your ends around. All right, you can use your bone folder to do that. And then you have to go across like this to cut the edges so that when you fold it over, um, It'll be like that, where your corners are tucked in. Um, I did use double-sided tape. I found 
found it easier to, since I wasn't working with a uh, heavy cover, cardboard cover, anything like that, I found it a little easier to use the double-sided tape. so that I can secure. This down with. The double sided tape is pretty sturdy. Then I use double-sided tape again to fold over my tops. I'm trying to do this sparingly because I'm running out of this. And this brand is just Scotch Permanent Double-Sided Tape. do is you fold your long sides down first. It's okay if you still have sticky tape because if you feel tapes, because this is going to your page is now going to have to be glued over this so it's okay and so again I use the double sided tape I didn't want um, any glue because, it, whoops, I think I came to my, coming to the end of my tape, uh, because the glue um, it will make the paper a little damp and wet. take a little longer for it to dry. Okay, so here's one cover that's on pretty secure. And the other one that I had made earlier. Oh, I do have more double-sided a different type of double-sided um, tape here. And this is really strong and sticky. And once it makes contact, it won't come off. Without damaging what you're doing. Okay. And 
with this one. You peel it back and it leaves the sticky part. as it should have. Okay. And so here is the accordion book finished. Okay. So it's a fun uh, project to do. to have a batch of mini paintings that you're doing. I will put a piece of elastic on that. And so that's another option to use, you know, your gel prints in that way. And, you know, the book a booklet, use your prints for the cover, and you can make these books um, as large or as small as you want to. It's pretty simple um, to do. And I'm doing it pretty simply, not anything complicated with it. And so I have another piece of elastic that I can make use of this leftover elastic that I have to hold it together. And these are small, lightweight um, books. And so you might want to try that. I'll put the materials and everything I use in the description box. And you can let me know what you think about these accordion books. Thanks for stopping by.